What's going on guys, it's Jerome Mon, and before we get started, I gotta shout out our sponsor for today's video, Season. Now check out this new design that Season sent over. This is their paradise design, and as you can tell, it looks crazy cool. They actually have a bunch of new designs on their webpage, which you can check out with the link in the description box below. But whenever I bring a Season ball to the gym, people are always stunned with how premium it feels. It really feels just as good as any other basketball on the market today, but it looks unique. So if you want to be a creator, check out Seasons Create with the link in the description box below. Jordan Brad, we have a problem. Look guys, I know you guys have been waiting for this review for a very long time and I apologize for that, but I want you to know that I don't drop a performance review until I feel like I fully understand the shoe that I'm reviewing. Because to me, the best way you get a performance review, the best way I can tell you guys how a particular shoe performs is if I actually push the shoe to its full capabilities. I really play ball in these guys. I don't just go to the gym, film the review, and tell you guys how it felt while I was filming. I really play in these. And that's why this shoe took forever to review because even after reviewing it, I still don't understand this shoe. This shoe took forever to break in. And even with 30, maybe even 40 plus hours of five on five basketball in these, I'm still not even sure I broke them in. Now you hear that term being tossed around a lot when you're talking about sneakers. Oh, you gotta break them in first. Once you break them in, they'll be great. But what does breaking them in actually mean? Well, it could mean a lot of things. A lot of times, straight out of the box, a shoe has a certain stiffness to it, whether it be with the materials, the midsole, or the cushioning. And breaking them in just means getting whatever was stiff to a place where it doesn't feel brand new anymore. And with the Jordan 33, I was never able to obtain that broken in feeling. Right out of the box, this shoe is extremely stiff, especially that midsole. And this is something that actually happened to me last year with the Jordan 32s, but eventually the 32s did break in. The 33s on the other hand, never really did. During use, the overall stiffness of the midsole caused my feet to feel extremely fatigued after only 25 to 30 minutes of use. And while it did get better over time, my feet would always eventually just feel worn out to the point where I just had to get out of the shoe because it was that painful. When I went to go film B-roll footage for this video, my feet just couldn't take it. It was that bad. It honestly felt like my foot was being absolutely strangled. Keep in mind, this is with light work. I'm not doing anything too extreme. I'm just going around the gym, running lightly, trying to get footage for the camera. And this was all after I played about 30 hours of five on five basketball on these. So in theory, these should have been broken in already, but they weren't. And that's really unfortunate because when my feet weren't hurting, that four foot unlock zoom air was awesome. It was bouncy, it was explosive. And I really wish my foot didn't hurt so bad because I would have loved to experience that cushioning setup more in a comfortable environment. But unfortunately, these just aren't that. Now I think that stiffness that I'm talking about comes from this large P-Bax plate which sits underfoot. It helps stabilize your entire ride and also protects the zoom unit into forefoot. The 32s actually used a very similar setup, pretty much identical. So I'm not sure if the P-Bax plate in the 33s is stiffer than what was used in the 32s, but it certainly felt like that because like I said, I could never really break these into a place where I felt comfortable. Now as for the fit, I did go down half a size here, which isn't abnormal for me with a Jordan brand sneaker. Although I did go true to size to a 10 and a half with the 32s, but in the 33s, I went down half a size because when I tried them on in store, I felt like they were a little long in the forefoot. 
And I also wanted to get this shoe to fit as close to my foot as possible because I was a little skeptical of that fast flight lacing system. Now to its credit, that fast flight lacing system does work. I really have no complaints about it at all other than not being able to make adjustments if need be. For example, I felt like the forefoot was a little bit tighter than the collar area. And with this lacing system, you can't tie up the front less than you tie up the midfoot or the back. It's just all the same tightness. And that's a blessing and a curse because you are getting even coverage throughout the entire shoe. But if you need to make a little bit of micro adjustments, that's just not something you can do here with the Jordan 33. But the good news is it does work, it does perform, and I really only needed like a few clicks for it to feel like I was fully locked in and secure. And that to me is actually pretty impressive. Now I do think it's worth mentioning that while I didn't have any problems with this lacing system mechanically, it does make me wonder what were to happen if these thin laces in the forefoot were to snap or if that locking mechanism, which you can see on the bottom of the shoe, were to break or fail in any way. What happens in that scenario? Because it's not like you can go out, get a fresh pair of laces and replace it and your problems are solved. You would probably have to go through customer service or something like that to get this shoe replaced because there's nothing we as consumers can do to fix this problem if something were to happen. I kind of like having that modularity of being able to replace it with a fresh pair of laces. With the Jordan 33, you can't really do that. But like I said, I didn't have any problems, so I am impressed for Jordan brand making this lacing system really fail-proof because I really didn't have any issues and I was shocked how well this shoe did fit around my foot. Now, as for the fit in the collar area, this is a little bit of a different story. I like the fit throughout the whole sneaker, but the collar area felt a little more loose compared to the rest of the shoe. And that made these feel more like a low top because that collar area isn't as protective as it may seem. But the real kicker here is that I often found myself loosening up this red strap on the medial side because like I mentioned earlier, my feet felt like they were being suffocated and I felt like loosening up this red strap would relieve me of some pain. But in reality, it just led to more problems with the fit in the collar area. And it actually made me wonder, had I gone with my true size of 10 and a half, would these have fit better? But in my opinion, it would have fit way too long because there is some dead space in the toe box, which is fine. I like my sneakers to fit like that. I hate when my feet are slamming toward the front of the shoe. I did not have that problem here. So I do think a size 10 was the right size for me, but the whole stiffness and suffocation of the shoe is something that Jordan brand should have ironed out because for me, it was a little uncomfortable. Now, the last two things I wanna talk about are the materials as well as the traction. Now for me, the traction was absolutely awesome. I really have no complaints about it. It was snappy, it was responsive and reliable. Even on some of the nastiest floors that I play on, the Jordan 33's traction was something that I definitely felt comfortable in. Now, if you do play on a dingy floor, you will have to wipe every now and then, but that is to be expected. And to me, wiping my outsole is just a habit. I do it at every dead ball opportunity I get anyways. But once you wipe, the Jordan 33's traction is A1. Definitely a plus here. Now, as for the materials, Jordan brand decided to go with a bunch of synthetic overlays as well as a mesh-like upper. It works, it's fine, it performs, it's lighter than what was used on the 32s. But the fact that Jordan brand is charging a premium price for these may rub some people the wrong way because for $185, you're not getting a ton of value here, especially when you look at other sneakers on the market today. There's so much value to be had in this category. The Jordan 33 can't really stack up against some of the other sneakers out there that really have great materials. But the important thing is, is that it performs, it works, and you're not really gonna notice them, which is something you should definitely look for in an Encore sneaker. You don't want the materials bothering you in any way. And I never felt like the materials here were a distraction. So that's definitely a good thing. Look guys, at the end of the day, if you're intrigued by the Jordan 33 and its fast flight lacing system, go ahead guys, cop yourself a pair, go crazy because it is a unique piece of technology. It's really unlike anything we have on the basketball shoe market today. So if you are a basketball sneaker junkie and you wanna experience this new piece of tech, it's worth it, definitely. It's, it's an interesting sneaker, but if you're asking me what basketball shoe you should get amongst all the other basketball shoes out there for basketball purposes, I can't really recommend the Jordan 33 because that break-in period 
was just way too painful. And when you're paying for a shoe that gives you problem and pain in your feet, that to me is the definition of not worth it. It's just not worth it. But like I said, if you wanna experience new tech, these are definitely gonna be right up your alley. So there you guys have it. That was a performance review of the Air Jordan 33. We got another one in the books. I wanna give a huge thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Seasons Create. You check out the ball right there. Check them out with the link in the description box below. Be sure to click my logo to subscribe to the channel for more performance reviews just like this. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot. My name is Jared. It's been great having you. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.